Okay, so today is actually tomorrow. Tomorrow is today. We made it out to the museum that I was talking about. Casa de Dios. Uh, it is the former home of Diego Maradona that was uh, purchased for him by the Argentino Juniors when he was signed with that team uh, back in, uh, shoot, 81, I want to say, 1980, a while back. Anyway. They uh, preserved the house. And it's a museum and you can go to it. Only in the afternoons. It's only open on certain days. And uh, in order to get to it from uh, where we're staying in Wilde, I took a bus for like literally an hour and 45 minutes on the bus. When I got on, when you get on the bus, you gotta tell them like what cross street you're getting off so they know how, uh, how much to charge you. And when I got on, I had no idea where the cross street was. And I just said, uh, Maradona's, the Casa de Maradona. And the guy just sort of laughed at me. <laughs> and he just put the maximum amount he charged me. So I think next time when I get back on the bus, take it all the way back to Wilde, I'll just tell him, uh, you know, cobrame el maximo, charge me the maximum. And he'll probably just do that. But uh, it's a couple blocks away here. There's a really cool mural on this underpass here. Here, I'll just show that off. And uh, it looks like it might rain in a little bit, so we, uh, <laughs> we may get caught out in the rain after we see this place, but it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it to check it out. So when we get there and it opens up, um, I'll continue the video, but for now, just wait, wait patiently. Okay, a little walking around. We got a little lost, but we found it. There it is. In esta casa vivió Diego Armando Maradona. This is it. This is the house. And uh, I don't know if we can go in yet. It doesn't seem to be open. Just wait around a little bit, I guess. See if anybody shows up. There's some other people standing over there. They may be waiting to get in too. I am a little bit early. I think it opens in about five minutes it's supposed to. And of course, uh, in Argentina, a lot of stuff happens late. Everybody's usually running about 15 minutes late in Argentina, I've noticed. Uh, so, let's take a look at the house. Hold on, let me, I'm gonna get across the street and try and get a shot from over there so you can see the whole thing. There it is. Pretty small, pretty small little house, modest. I mean, you wouldn't know it if it didn't have the plaque on the side and the pictures of Maradona. You would have no idea that that's the house. But there it is. And uh, you know, when he moved into this house with his family, uh, he was only he was only like 18 years old when he first got signed with uh, Argentino Juniors. So. modest house I guess but you know much 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 nicer than where he where he grew up like I said I mentioned uh, that house the, in the neighborhood that I, I can't even get to because none of the Ramis drivers would take me there but uh, you can tell from the picture that I put uh, you know in the video you can tell how much nicer this place is and when we get inside I'm sure I'm sure it's a lot nicer too as well inside anyway we'll just wait and uh, hopefully it'll open up soon and we'll be able to check it out inside. Okay, so we're inside, we're getting a little tour. And like always, I'm gonna hang back, hang back behind the tour group because I don't understand what they're saying really. And we're gonna film everything. So he lived here with his whole family. It was like eight people in the family, I think he said. 
tienen que ir a las redes, se arroba la casa de Dios en Instagram, con la palabra de Dios con B17, bueno, lo quieren subir, cualquier cosa. Sí, 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 sí. ¿De qué parte de Estados Unidos? Uh, de Ciudad de, Ciud de Chicago. ¿Chicago? Sí, ah, con la Jordan, Chicago. Michael Jordan. Sí, sí, por supuesto. Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Sí, y, 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 y uh, uh, Maradona es como uh, el Michael Jordan de sí, fútbol. Sí, sí, tal cual, sí, sí, sí. sí, sí, sí. hard to get a shot of the whole room because the, the place is not really that big but I mean it looks like it's really well preserved this is a very very early 1980s late 1970s early 1980s furniture this is so cool look at this oh look at this electric uh, synthesizer organ old school fun machine by Baldwin Looks like Maradona used to play. There, if you can see that right there. I'll zoom in a little bit, it says, Ya lo compraron con Pele, which means he's already being compared to Pele. And that was when he was 18. They were already comparing him to Pele when he was 18. And there's this Davis Cup, Russia versus Argentina in Moscow, 2006. He signed it. This is this is really incredible how everything's been preserved. It says here the original structure of the house had a dividing wall that was taken down by the handbag factory. And Diego's sisters slept in the front row. So even though this place, you know, much bigger and much nicer than the house where Maradona grew up out in San uh, Villa Fiorito, it's still like a pretty small, and he had the whole family here. This place is great. I mean, it's it's cool as a museum, but it's just so cool to see something that is preserved. You know, a lot of this stuff I'm sure wasn't you know here when uh, when he was living here, but you know the furniture and and just being in the house and being like walking around the places where where he lived and his family lived is really amazing. Let's see what's back here. Oh, this is the bathroom, which it looks like they have also preserved and. I guess you could use if you needed to. Here's a picture of Maradona in the bathtub, I think. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then back here, it looks like this was his parents' bedroom, which 
we can't go in there. We can imagine what it, what it looked like in there. Looks like this is sort of like a living room area. They got all the trophies here. Oh, this is the Liber Liberators Cup trophy again. Libertadores. This must be a recreation, I think. Because, well, I don't know, maybe it is. I'm not sure exactly how they hand out those trophies. So maybe it's like, because we saw one of these at, uh, at the La Bombonera yesterday. trying to be very, keep my voice down, be pretty quiet in here, because this, I don't know, it feels, it feels like you're in a church or something. I don't want to, don't want to talk too loud. But, oh, here, if you're ever around and you want to visit it, there's the uh, contact information. And I'll put this also in a description, like uh, in a link down in the description. There's the address. That's kind of 2257 La Paternal. This is actually in the city of Buenos Aires, so it's a neighborhood. Looks like a lot of photos of people who came and visited. Along with the nice gentleman who runs the museum. Wearing a Michael Jordan shirt. <laughs> That was the guy who, when I told him I was from Chicago at the beginning here, he said, Michael Jordan. That's the thing. People know Michael Jordan all over the place, but more people need to know about Maradona. I'm, I'm sure is a, is a recreation, but this is the uh, this is like the MVP trophy that you get when you're the MVP of the uh, World Cup, which he was in 1986 when they won. This is a uh, that's the jersey of the Argentino juniors. And this is, uh, looks like a movie poster for a movie that they made after, probably after the 1986 World Cup when he won in Mexico. Looks like news clippings and pictures of him and the family. I did notice back here there's a they have the kitchen preserved. Yeah, look at this. Oh, this is great. So this is it. This is the kitchen. This was the kitchen for the whole family. Like eight eight people, I think. Here's some other people ringing the doorbell out there. More people showing up. I imagine this is a pretty popular place, you know, especially in Argentina. Like they call it uh, Casa de Dios. Dios means God, and uh, that that's so. Maradona was number ten, so you'll always see it written Dios, but the I and the O are actually a ten, so it's like a D, ten S Dios. It's kind of his nickname. Actually, you can see it on the uh, on the banner over here that I showed. So, see, La Casa de Dios. See, there's a like a sheet metal kind of roof over this area and a basketball hoop. I wonder if they like 
him and the family, like his uh, his brothers and sisters, played a little basketball in here, maybe. It's really cool. Everybody else seems to have gone upstairs, so I'm actually going to wait until they come back down because I don't want to bother them out filming. We'll go up there and film. I think these pins on this map, I think, are like pins that people put, maybe, from like people who came and visited, maybe. If so, nothing from Chicago yet. So maybe I can talk to the guy, get him to put a pin in there for Chicago. We'll see, we'll see, anyway. Looks like there is a movie Amazon original movie about Maradona. I had no idea. I'm going to have to look for this. Maradona. Sueño bendito. That is probably worth checking out. Okay, so head up the stairs here. And uh, I think you can actually get to the roof too, which I'd like to do. I think that would be cool. Some great, great photos here of Maradona. This, yeah, this is his room. This is his bedroom, Lorentorio de Diego. Because he used to like sit here and listen to records. Fur coat. <laughs> I've seen pictures of him with that fur coat. There's his bed. Like I said, he wasn't a very big guy. I think he was only about 5'6", so he didn't need a very big bed. And then this jacket over here. Pull the camera around here. I've seen him wearing that in a lot of pictures too. So this is so cool. They have, not only do they preserve, like what the the building looks like but they got a lot of this stuff too like his old clothes his shoes very cool very very cool and then up here I think this is like yeah up on the roof yeah yeah there's definitely this is the roof <laughs> oh this is cool so his window looked out onto the roof like that, and then looks like people have written their messages here on this wall, all over. Another bathroom up here. Another picture of Diego Maradona in the shower. Hola. This is great. And this, this is like a, this is like the shrine, the shrine to Maradona. These are like the gods, the gods of football, Maradona in the center, Pele, that guy, right there, there's Messi. This is very cool, lots of Maradona memorabilia and more people writing their, uh, their messages. Oh, and there, <laughs> like I said, Maradona is like the Michael Jordan of soccer. And there, Michael Jordan jersey hanging right here because game recognizes game. There's Maradona in his older years. 
with his cool mirror sunglasses. That's a cool picture. That's a very cool picture. Someone left a dollar up here. I don't know why. I don't know the significance of that. Oh, it is. Maradona. On the cover of Rolling Stone. Very cool. Very cool. I keep poking around. I go out onto the actual roof roof. Looks like I just passed a room that looks like it might be a little little shop where you can buy uh, maybe buy some like memorabilia but out here La Pareja, the grill every uh, every house in Argentina needs one someone painted a, a mural Oh, here. You can see who painted this mural. Looks like they have an Instagram. Total Illustrator. And this beautiful mural here on the side. Dios. Yeah, and here we are. We're up on the roof. This is nice. This would be a nice place. I mean, honestly, after look after growing up in Villa Fiorito in the, the house with no no plumbing and no running water, and then you know moving here, having like a a grill up on the roof, you get to hang out up here, have uh, you know asado, barbecues with the family. Man, that'd be that'd be pretty nice. That'd be pretty nice. That's a real come up. And it must have been really nice. Especially at 18. And to be paid, you know. It's getting paid pretty well. To be able to support the family. It's a big deal. A big deal. I'm going to poke around uh, a little bit more into the, uh, the gift shop area. We'll see what's in there. Alright, I just bash my head against that. Way too tall for this place. Like I said, Maranani, he was like 5'6". I'm like 6'4", so way too big. But anyway, looked in the gift shop. There's some pretty good looking stuff in there, but it was all like very, very expensive. So I'm not going to get any of that. But uh, that's about it. I think we've seen everything here. And uh, it is about to start raining. And I kind of want to make it back to the bus stop that's covered uh, before it starts raining. So, I think that's going to be it. What do you say? I mean, what do you say about Maradona? What do you say about standing in the house where, like, literally the greatest soccer player of all time lived with his family? I don't know. Like I said, it feels, kind of feels like a church in here. It's really amazing. It's amazing. It's a great, great way to finish off the whole trip. You know, we saw, started with the, uh, the Maradona mural up on the side of that building. Then we, uh, we saw La Bombonera, where he played with the Boca Juniors. And now we got to see his house, where he lived with his family. You know, like, uh, first, uh, first time he, he, you know, he hit it big and got his first professional contract. So it's pretty amazing. There's a lot of great memorabilia in here. If you're ever around in this part, and you're in Buenos Aires and you want to see something cool, Definitely come to this place. And like I said, I'm going to put the contact information down in the description so you can check it out. But I think that's going to be it. We're going to call it. So, as always, we'll see you all next time. Stay tuned. All right, so that was cool. Uh, the guy that uh, runs the place, his name is Cesar. And... Uh, he gave me he gave me his contact info, so I'll you know like I said I'll put put that in the description in a link, so in case you're here and you want to go see it, nice guy. Uh, but as we were leaving, he told me we were chatting a little bit, and he told me that the stadium of the uh, Argentino Juniors is like down this way, maybe like three blocks. So it is does look like it's gonna start raining, but man, 
I can't pass it up. So we're gonna walk down three blocks and see if we can at least get some shots of it. He said there's a museum too, which I don't even know if it's open or not. Maybe it is, maybe we'll check it out. But uh, we'll head down this way and we'll see what we see. All right, so he wasn't kidding. It's right there, I can see it. Can't really see it from here because of the trees, but that like red building one block over, we'll head over there right now. We'll check it out. Hopefully before it starts pouring rain. One thing I've noticed about the rain in Argentina, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just the neighborhood I've been in, but when it rains, like it rains, man. It like pours rain down. So I'm hoping it doesn't start. And if it does start, I'm hoping it's maybe just like a little drizzle. Uh, and then we don't have to like get caught out in like a full on downpour because I have zero rain gear. I will get completely soaked. The camera will get destroyed and everything. So we don't want that. Oh man, look at this, here it is. This is the stadium. Pretty damn cool. Looks a lot smaller than uh, than the La Bombonera and the Boca, where the Boca Juniors play. M much more modest, it looks like. I mean, it's still big, but uh, it's also definitely doesn't seem like it's as much of a tourist attraction as La Bombonera. That place is crazy with tourists, man. I was there yesterday, it wasn't even a weekend, and uh, you know, just people, people, crazy, just packed, the whole place packed with people, the whole neighborhood completely packed with tourists, or at least that section of the neighborhood. Wow, all right, so here we go. Now, he said there was a museum, too, and I wonder if, uh, I wonder if there's a, well, it looks like there's like a ticket booth over here, man. Maybe there is a museum. Uh, we're gonna look into this. We'll be back in a second. So, there is indeed a museum. And uh, there's a sign right there. El Templo de Football, the Temple of Football. And uh, I don't know if we need to pay for it. Doesn't look like it. So we can just walk up these stairs, find out. I'm just gonna walk in assuming I don't have to pay for it. And if someone asks me to pay, I'll pay. But otherwise, we're just gonna look around. Estoy en la tierra de Dios. Hola. Buen día. ¿Todo bien? Uh, sí, todo bien. ¿Y vos? Bien, ¿Todo bien? ¿Hablas español? Uh, un poco, un poco. ¿Do you prefer English? Uh, sí, sí. Ok, perfect. So, I tell you, we have a guide tour oh, sí? that includes visit around the museum, then we go, it's a guide tour. Then we go downstairs, we go to the press, uh, conference press room. Sí. Then, then to the dressing room of our team. Oh, sí. We go into the field. We pass to all the stands and we finish at Maradona Sanctuary. Oh, muy bien, muy bien. The visit, uh, I think, sí, at two. In oh, ten okay. minutes. Uh, ¿Cuánto cuesta? Uh, just ask, ask the other guy. Okay. okay. Sí, muy bien, gracias. No, de nada. Okay, so, guy spoke, spoke English, there's a guided tour, we're going to get to see the whole stadium and eventually see like a shrine to Maradona at the end, we got to find out how much this costs. For uh, uh, foreigners, seven thousand pesos, breaks down to about eight bucks, totally yeah. worth it. And uh, looks like, well, I think the same group that was with us at the, at the house is with us here. So, flip the camera around so you can see what it's going on. You uh, will do the tour in English, so I think that the other guy is coming. Oh, sí. So, ah, está bien. Está bien en español. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, sí, sí. Bueno, por supuesto. Adelante, entonces. So he offered me the tour in English, but we're not going to take it. We're taking the tour in Spanish, even though we may not understand everything. But we'll still get to see. Wow, look at this. So this we did not get to see at La Bombonera. They did not let you on the field into the candy box, as they say. But here and here. 
Look at this. Of course. We're not going to take the tour in English. Come on. It's not how we roll. We do tours in Spanish and we understand like 10% of what's going on, but it's more fun that way. Okay, so that guy came back and he said, uh, yeah, you take the tour in Spanish, but if there's stuff that you don't understand, I'll go ahead and explain it to you in English. And I told him, no, like, it's more fun if I don't understand anything, because that's basically how we've been doing everything here in Argentina. I understand like 10% of everything, and I just sort of follow the group. Where the group goes, we go. And uh, I think we're going to do the same thing we do on this tour that we do on every tour, which is we'll hang back, right? We'll hang back and we'll film all the stuff. We'll get to do our own little commentary um, and we will not really understand much of the tour. But uh, also that guy told me he, he's actually been to Chicago before. He said he went there about five years ago. In the summer, of course. Which is a you know, good time to go. You don't want to go in the winter. Because, uh, well, reasons. But that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. So it looks like the tour is going to start pretty soon. And uh, we'll check back in when it does. It's going to be a longer video than I thought it was. And I already did my outro like over there at the house. Fecha, poco con barraca central, en cancha de huracán. Pero se ve como siempre, no tenían ganas de. Claro, exacto. Bueno, ocho años más tarde, Argentino seguía en la B Nacional, en la segunda división, y iba primero, faltando pocas fechas para que termine el campeonato. Ahora sí, ascendimos. No. A falta de tres fechas, huelga de jugadores, se suspende el campeonato y ascienden por decreto Atlanta y Ferro, que iban segundo y octavo. Increíble, ¿no? Bueno, habituales manejos en nuestra AFA siempre tan <risa> pulcra. Bueno, igual, no se angustien. Siete años más tarde, en 1955, Argentinos sale campeón de la B Nacional y ahí sí, por fin, la tercera es la vencida, asciende y vuelve a la primera división. Consigue su primer ascenso, si bien ya había estado antes en la primera. Bien, como dijimos antes, un 20 de octubre de 1976, en un partido contra Talleres de Córdoba, Diego Armando Maradona hace su debut en esta cancha, pero de Diego ya vamos a hablar más adelante, así que ahora saltamos a 1983. En ese momento el técnico de argentinos era Ángel Labruna, ídolo de River y uno de los máximos goleadores del fútbol argentino, y él dice que no puede desplegar el fútbol que él quería para argentinos porque el estadio era muy chico. Él dice que quería jugar con dos winners bien abiertos, y que las dimensiones del campo de juego no se lo permitían. Entonces, textualmente dice, si nos vamos de la paternal, vamos a salir campeones. Obviamente, una frase muy fuerte, pero muy difícil para nosotros los hinchas argentinos, con lo que significa la paternal. Irse de la paternal sería algo terrible, pero se ve que confiamos mucho en él, porque le hicimos caso, nos fuimos de la paternal, y se ve que razón tampoco le faltaba, porque un año más tarde, 1984, Argentino consigue su primer título de primera división. Metropolitano 84. Pero antes voy a venir enterado antes de mostrar las copas. Porque quiero que vean un par de cosas del viejo estadio. Por ejemplo, una de las lámparas, cartel de salida, carteles de la, que los nombres de las calles, Boyacá, la paralela a la que estamos ahora Gavilán y Médanos, hoy actualmente Juan Agustín García. Y acá una pausa para contarles algo que es muy importante que sepan. Este es el único museo de un equipo de fútbol en el mundo, con el del Torino de Italia, que está hecho enteramente por hinchas. Argentinos no tiene ninguna empresa privada que maneje el museo, no hay ningún sponsor y ninguno de los objetos está comprado. Son todas donaciones de hinchas argentinos, socios que se acercan y se desprenden de un recuerdo personal o familiar para dejarlo acá y que esté a la vista de todos los visitantes. También obviamente recibimos muchas donaciones de exjugadores, principalmente salidos de argentinos. Bien, ahora sí, me van a ayudar. ¿Cuántas estrellas tiene el escudo? Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Cinco, cinco. estrellas. Muy sí, bien. Sí. ¿Y cuántas copas hay acá? Cinco. Muy bien, ¿sabés contar? Eh? ¿Eh? Muy, bien. Muy bien, cada estrella es un campeonato, tres títulos nacionales. Okay, real quick, he told a story about this. This is a replication, it's like a 
false jersey of uh, the jersey that Diego Maradona was wearing when he scored the two goals I was talking about in the 86 um, uh, World Cup. And the reason that they have a false one is because uh, they, they, the, uh, the one was lost. The actual one was lost. And they, they've been looking for it, but they never found it. Also, what I was talking about with um, this being the debut of Lionel Messi, he debuted here at this stadium on the uh, Argentine selection team in 2004. And this is a picture of him playing. And there's the jersey that he was wearing. So important here for uh, not just for Maradona, but also for Lionel Messi. Okay, so this is the field. They let us out on the field. Por acá tienen banco suplente local, banco suplente visitante y cabina del bar, aunque la verdad que está para incendiar. Yo al bar lo detesto, pero bueno, decisión personal. ¿Sabes qué están haciendo arriba? Sí, arriba están empezando las obras para poner el techo porque el estadio ahora está sufriendo varias remodelaciones. Eh, bueno, como les dije, acá va a venir un techo arriba de la de, la de Gavilán. Atrás de ese arco va a haber una tribuna que hoy no hay. Y atrás del otro arco va a haber una segunda bandeja. El estadio actualmente tiene capacidad para 20.000 personas. Con estas remodelaciones que yo les digo, va a llegar a 30.000 espectadores. Bien, también les digo que este fue el único estadio llamado Diego Armando Maradona. Okay, so what he said was after uh, Maradona died, uh, after he died in 2020, they named the stadium after him. And as you can see on the seats where the players sit, they put Maradona number 10 on all the seats. And also that big number 10 on the seats over there. They painted that on there after he died and they named the stadium after him. So what happened upstairs, when we were trying to film, uh, we got to the like shrine part, the Diego Maradona. And uh, I was saving my battery to film in there. And swear to God, the power went out. So I literally couldn't film any of it. But uh, I think the tour is about to end. I'll tell you once we get out of the stadium what was going on in that room. So we made it to the shrine of Maradona. And what this is, is um, on, the, on the date of his death, which was in, in November uh, 2020, people like on the date of his death, the anniversary of his death, they keep coming here and they, they put stuff out for him, like all this stuff, this tribute. And it's not just people from Argentina, it's people from all over the world. Like right here, people put masks out during the, uh, during the pandemic. And they put out signs. They put, you know, um, all kinds of things. Soccer balls. They put jerseys, flags. And you can see all these jerseys over here that people have put out. And they, they'll sign their name and a message, right, to Maradona. And they put these out. So every, uh, every uh, on the anniversary of his death, they'll collect all the things that people have put and they'll hang them in here in this shrine. So there's a whole shrine, and there's a lot of interesting stuff in here, honestly, like this is, a, if I understood correctly, um, someone, uh, she, like this person graduated from, uh, from college and, and immediately brought her diploma here and like left it as a, as a, uh, uh, like a tribute to Maradona. And these things are from all over the place, different places in the world like places uh, from Napoli where he played um, and also over here there was one from uh, 
from China, there's one from the United States. So people from all over the world are putting these things here. And this guy who's sitting right here is basically in charge of making sure, like taking care of everything and making sure that, uh, that nobody messes with anything. Because it's very important. This is like the shrine to the man right there. Diego Maradona. People put money from different countries. They have like people will put uh, pictures of Maradona and also other different uh, like different players with a with a little stone on top of it. They'll put rosary beads, all kinds of stuff. Here's different money from different countries: Mexico, Brazil, Uruguay. People actually put their credit cards, so people that have credit cards with their expiration date is the same as Maradona's, like, death. They brought their credit cards and left them here as, like, a tribute to Maradona. It's amazing. Well, very well. If it seems, we're back. We have a few more things So we did it. We saw it. Even though the power went out in the museum, we weren't able to film very much in there. We did get to see that really amazing shrine to Maradona, and apparently that thing just keeps growing because as the date, you know, the anniversary date of his death keeps happening, people will come and they'll put stuff here, and uh, they keep adding it to the shrine, which is really cool. So it's a few days, a few days later now, and uh, I was editing together that video and realized there's really no outro for, well, I mean technical difficulties my camera battery was dying a little bit but it's good because I think uh, it gave me a little bit of time to reflect on uh, a little more on Maradona and uh, on what we saw right in the two in the two videos and uh, I gotta say you know Maradona he was a he was a very like flashy player on the field he's very brash um, but he was also like, you know, he was a big celebrity, but he was also a pretty humble guy, I think. And, um, you know, I remember seeing an interview once with him where he was asked, like, about the pressure, you know, like, what's the pressure like of being the greatest, you know, player? And uh, he just said, very humbly, he just said, look, I'm, I'm just a soccer player, I'm, you know, who maybe is a little better than some of the other ones around me. And... But that's not pressure. That's not pressure. The real pressure is the guy who has to go out there on the streets every day and he has to work and find a way to earn enough money so that he can he can feed his family every day and that they can, you know, live for one more day. And um, I think that means a lot now, especially that I've seen, you know, learn more about Maradona and learn about how he came up and how he grew up and how tough it was for him uh, growing up and him and his family. So I don't think he ever really forgot where he came from. And uh, interestingly, that tour at the stadium of the Argentinos Juniors, at the end uh, of the museum part of the tour, where I said the power went out in the stadium, uh, and we weren't, we weren't able to film in that room, that last room, but what they had there was like they had a jersey that he wore um, and they had like a little film just uh, you know talking about his accomplishments with the team but they also had uh, pictures over the years of him when he had come back to the stadium right to make an appearance and um, you know when he was older after he was retired and you know you I think that, like, he never really forgot where he came from and that was his first team you know it was the first uh, opportunity for him um, and I think I think he never really forgot that and and they uh, the organization never forgot him either you know after he passed away they renamed the stadium after him they put the you know the number 10 on all of the seats where the players sit and and of course they did that in in La Bombanera too in the Boca Juniors but there was something about that tour with the Argentinos Juniors that was different. You know, the Boca Juniors, that museum, that place is a huge tourist attraction. The museum was absolutely packed with people when I went there. 
and it, the museum is very flashy. Um, and it was fun. It was it was a fun experience. It really was. But there was something a lot more personal about uh, going through the museum uh, with the Argentinos Juniors. And you know, it was really just me and like five to ten other people on a very small group doing a doing a tour. And and that guy Lucas, who was leading the tour, really nice guy. Everybody that worked there, who I talked to, they were all super nice and just very like um, it felt like a very personal thing and the tour was actually really long I didn't get to show a lot of it because of you know the power outage and because my camera battery was dying I wanted to make sure to save enough battery for the end when we got to the shrine um, but I gotta say it really was a great tour and if you're ever uh, in that neighborhood in La Paternal and you want like a really good you know one two uh, combination of things having to do with Diego Maradona. You, you really can't beat going to the house, Casa de Dios, and then go down the street a few blocks, go to the stadium, take the tour. I mean, all told, it'll cost you like 15 bucks to do both, and it's well, well worth it. So I think after that, after that, I can tell why he, uh, why he is who he is here in Argentina. You know what I mean? Like. It, People are going through tough times here in Argentina, and throughout the history of Argentina, there have been periods of tough times where people go through it. And the people here are very resilient. And like I was saying in a video, you know, further back when we were walking around on Florida Street talking about the inflation here, the people just figure out a way to get by. And a guy like Maradona, who came up, you know, in a really poor neighborhood, one of the poorest neighborhoods probably in, in all of Buenos Aires, and was able to to make it big and able to, uh, you know, provide for his family, but also never really forgot where he came from and never forgot about the struggles of, of you know, like he said, the guy who just has to go out on the street and figure out a way to earn enough money to feed his family every day. Like, that is something I think that rightfully really resonates with a lot of people in this country and I think that's really the reason not, not just because of his greatness not just because of uh, the fact that he won a World Cup for uh, for you know the Argentine national team but just the fact that you know he came from that kind of a background and that he never forgot where he came from and he always remembered the, the little guy right the people of Argentina the just the normal people trying to get by every day I think that's why he, he really is so uh, so famous and so beloved here in Argentina so anyway that's gonna be the actual end of it not like that fake outro that we did back at the house that was a fake out I'm sorry about that but uh, this will be the real outro and um, yeah I uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that but Stay tuned for the next video. I swear it's going to be a good one, I promise. Uh, yeah, have a good one.